about to set off on a patrol around British Gibraltar territorial waters. There's been an increase in activity in the last month, maybe, in uh, narco trafficking. We are law enforcement on the waters. We uh, provide or stop any sort of um, illegal activity, be it smuggling, drugs, or all that sort of thing. Obviously, we've got the Straits and um, Morocco, where the drugs come into Europe, the shortest route. Comes across, comes well within our waters. Sometimes we have to deal with it. They are out there. They're sitting out there in international waters where they can't be seen or found or located. They're normally located when they come close to land because that's when they become suspicious. Yeah, I see it. Bail, huh? Bail, Bail is a bail. Yes! Gibraltar, one of Britain's last overseas territories. Over 30,000 people call it home, but millions more visit every year, enjoying a little bit of Britain under the Mediterranean sun. Lying at the very tip of mainland Europe, with a border to Spain in the north and Morocco just nine miles south across the water. Jib's 430 customs and police officers are tasked with protecting this critical gateway between Africa and Europe. Tackling everything from smugglers to tourists in trouble, saving lives enforcing the law and clamping down on crime. They are the cops on the rock. Oh, mate. John Cartwright and customs team Yankee are on patrol in British territorial waters of Gibraltar. And they have spotted drugs. Right, we've got a bale. We've got a bale, probably about 30 kilos worth of drugs in it. Um, this is obviously due to some sort of chase that's happened overnight or something. Ma, ma, ma. And they've uh, chased some cargo. Ma. The discarded bale is likely to contain large slabs of cannabis resin. That's a big one, eh? Yeah, it is a big one. Yeah. About 35, 40 kilos worth. I couldn't bring it up by myself. Yeah. Cannabis resin comes from Morocco, then smuggled across the Straits of Gibraltar to Europe in a trade estimated to be worth 8 billion euros a year. Well, let's look for some more. There, yeah, there, might, be, there might be more. Like that. Uh, maybe the king's on it. Because of the, the chases and the, that happen overnight or during the day, what the, the narco ribs tend to do is to lose weight. Sometimes they, they have to uh, check us in either bales or, or, or their fuel containers in order to get a bit faster. If they're getting uh, approached by law enforcement so they can uh, go a bit faster in order to get away. So uh, we'll keep peeled and fingers crossed we can get a couple more. Maybe an empty right. bill. They've opened it. Roger, we are in the area of uh, V6, V7. We just found a wrapper over there. Um, it's quite close uh, to land, so maybe we should look out for vessels in the area. Mm. We've just found a wrapper of one of the bales, which means there's vessels in the area that have found them as well, and they've opened them up and uh, hidden the slabs. It's easy to hide them individually. So there's going to be vessels in the area. Um, who are hiding the slabs from the bale packages. Now it's a race to retrieve any bales of cannabis before the smugglers reclaim them. There's something at about 11 o'clock. It's a possible bale! Relax.
This one's a thicker one. That's like the other ones. Bada, bada, bada. Bada, bada, bada. Go forward. Hey, let's get it with hands. This one will be lighter. There's one over there, you know. Vale, we go now, we go now. This is a 35 one. More cannabis. And now they think they've spotted something else floating in the water. Uh, go straight now. To your left, uh, 11 o'clock. Here, here, here. No, that's a bit of pataca. It's a pataca. Fuel can. It's not cannabis, but it was dumped by smugglers. And customs are looking to seize any fuel they can. Oh, there's got to be more. <laughs> there's another pataca over there somewhere. Got it. And there's more. Some are empty. But several are full. The team don't want to leave any out here. If we intercept 15 fuel containers, that is disrupted whatever they wanted to do. Another one over there in front of you. Out of reverse, reverse. Ali, got it. After a full sweep, the team returned to base. We'll take them in now, we'll weigh the, uh, weigh the drugs. We'll check that they are drugs, obviously, what kind of drugs they are. Customs officer Liam Franco will weigh the drugs to allow the team to determine their street value. The process now is to, to weigh the individual bales to see what they weigh. As you can see, this was 37 kilos. And then this one seems to be a bit bigger, so probably closer to 40. Yeah, 43. And uh, this is probably as a result of the, this morning we had a rib in Gibraltar waters who was being chased by the, the Spanish authority, and this has probably been as a result of that. They've been um, jettisoned overboard and they've been floating around in our waters. And John has done the maths. That's a total street value of roughly £400,000. Um, it's amazing how much it can be just for just two bales when these boats can carry 50, 60 bales or whatever else they want to carry. Um, we bagged them, tagged them, well, we tagged them for evidence purposes. Um, we'll put them away into a secure area and dispose of them um, at a later date. It's been a successful morning of disrupting drug dealers working in the Straits of Gibraltar. You may be lucky loads of times, but we just have to be lucky once. That luck will take away four or five million pounds, whatever, fuel for your vessel, whatever it may be. So we just have to be lucky that once. They have to be lucky every time and Sky will get out of the way of any law enforcement that's out there. There are still plenty of drugs making it to Gibraltar's shores. Information has been forthcoming from a registered informant to the effect that a person known to him is currently in possession of a substantial amount of psychoactive mushrooms. In law, these are referred to as psilocin or psilocybin, a Class A drug. OK? A search warrant has been obtained for this subject. Threat and risk assessment. I am concerned that the subject has numerous convictions which relate to violence, including violence against police. Should he be under the influence, he may perceive police actions differently than that of a rational person subjected to the same circumstances. Basically, if he's tripping, um, he's not going to react the way an, a normal person would, OK? One of the reasons we've come in at 7 o'clock, because I'm hoping he's not tripping at 7 o'clock in the morning, but we'll see. Detective Sergeant Jerry Martinez leads the team of specialist officers in the drug squad. I'm not like a farmer, you know what I mean? I'm more than happy to sleep in the morning. Um, 
So yeah, I prefer I prefer the nighttime jobs than the morning jobs. But you know, there's tactical advantages to to operating earlier. I mean, we've done jobs even earlier than this. You know, sometimes we'll hit a house at four or five o'clock in the morning. For Jerry, who's seen a lot in 13 years as a cop, today is the first. It would certainly be the first time I have come across um, psychoactive mushrooms in Gibraltar. I'm not saying it hasn't been here, I know it has, but um, you know, my 13 years of policing, I, I, have not, I have not come across it. Okay, I'm gonna leave space for the days here behind, here on the left. Top this. Perfect. Entry theme this side. It's more space. Ready, ready, ready. Go. Come, come, come. Let's go. Jerry Martinez and the Gibraltar Drug Squad are raiding the house of a suspected magic mushroom dealer. Kitchen clear! House clear. House clear. What are the chances of that? Just get comfortable. Yeah, 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 go for it. Where could he be? The flat's occupant has done a runner. Jerry asks patrolling cops to be on the lookout for him. If you could uh, broadcast to a Foxchester mobile if seen, he's to be stopped and drug squad officers informed, please. The suspect may not be home, but he is definitely a fungi fan. I don't know what that is, but not quite what we were looking for, but certainly a good indicator that the the intelligence was at least correct. Got it. Got it. Yes. Let's have a look. Well done. That's why you Let me see. Let me see. Bring it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well done. Based on description, these appear to be the suspected illegal magic mushrooms. Beautiful. Well done, boys. Let's get all of it out. Is that all of it? They're all different strains. Come on, let's pop it all out. I don't want to touch it without gloves. Let me get it all separate bags. Mushrooms like these can have a wide variety of harmful effects when consumed, from hallucinations to anxiety and paranoia. The effects can last up to five hours. Oh, that's a nice amount as well. I reckon about a few so grams. Oh, that is amazing. That's class A, that. That's class A, yeah. Um, we found the paraphernalia, we found the wrappers, we found the scales. All supports our claim that he's going to be uh, selling. The only thing they haven't found is their suspect. The drug squad leave him a note telling him to surrender himself, but they won't stop looking. <laughs> Lights. We can do the... Everybody fancy some mushrooms on top? <laughs> 100% certain that he'll be arrested, if not by the end of play today, tomorrow. Very, very small place. Um, everybody knows everybody. We'll put the feelers out, we'll put our people on it, and uh, I'm certain if he doesn't make contact with us shortly, we'll be, uh, we'll be making contact with him. Boss. Back at base, they need to determine exactly how much Class A they have. Now, I'm going to... 68.5 grams. 
How much? 68.5. Total? Yeah. Mega. These were subsequently found to weigh a combined total of approximately 68.5 grams, with a street value of £1,400. And in an effort to find their suspect, the team have swiftly produced a wanted poster and are launching a manhunt. Mushrooms, mushrooms. Okay, no worries, mate. So it's that one. Yeah. Up this end. The team hit any addresses he is known to frequent, making it hard to lie low. An ex partner lives here. But there is no answer at the flat, and suddenly the team are being called back to base. At the police station, the suspect's flatmate has decided to come clean. I'll see you left. We did a search warrant in the house this morning. Within the residence, there's been drugs found. There's been class A, class B. I'm going to do an interview, and you're going to be able to explain yourself. But Jerry is still confident the suspect himself will turn up. This is Gibraltar. Um, you know, we've, we've gone to his ex-wife's residence. We've... Uh, Spoken to family members, you know, we put the word out, and he, he knows that it's Gibraltar. You can only be um, on the run for so long. And at four in the afternoon, nine hours after the raid, the suspect turns himself in. You have the right this, idea, bro. Fine, this is for you to provide your account, okay? Oh, you can go and take anyone's phone now. No, we have a search warrant. But okay. what found? The mushrooms. Found yeah, mushrooms. 60, 68.5 grams of mushrooms from my bedroom, okay? Yeah, bro. That's no problem at all. You gave us your account of interview. That's it? Sorry? You can show me that? We put you in interview. In fact, these now because we're going for DNA. They'll be sent for DNA. The mushrooms will be tested. If they are magic mushrooms, they've been Class A drugs in any form since 2005. It's illegal to produce, supply or possess them and could carry a seven-year jail term. But the suspect has got the cops thinking. I mean, they have their opinions on it, but in the day, law's law. I actually said that to him. You can have any opinion you want. No, no one can stop you having an opinion, but you can't just go and break the law because you feel that your opinion is bigger than the law. Not everything from Mother Nature is good, though. I mean, like the blue ring doctor pusses from Mother Nature. And you cut that into a thousand pieces, and a thousand pieces will try and kill you. It's true. Yeah. The poison arrow frog is from nature. So is the tsunami. <laughs> so, yeah? Coronavirus. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure that came from eating bats. <laughs> Customs teams at sea have been recovering empty fuel cans dumped from drug smugglers' boats. Some of the canisters float ashore, and Constable Steve Peach is well aware that criminal activity is being organised right on his patch. Right, so these canisters, they've been disposed of by the people carrying out either tobacco or drug activity, and then the smuggling of that tobacco and, and drugs. So we're going to go pick them up. Yeah, definitely full of petrol. An empty canister has been disposed of on the beach. Obviously, it must have been used last night. So these petrol canisters have been disposed of by the persons on these vessels. Obviously, they filled up the boat, no longer need them, it's extra weight. They'll just chuck them, you know? The fuel suppliers are part of a Gibraltar-wide network. Basically, they come from different locations around Gibraltar. <laughs> 
Drug dealers burn a lot of fuel running hash from Morocco to Spain and pay good money to anyone who can resupply them with petrol out at sea, where customs and police aren't watching. It's become its own little business. You know, it's uh, making quite a lot of money on just supplying the containers. Basically, the canisters are help fueling the, the vessels that are carrying uh, cargo, whether it be drugs or it be tobacco or anything else they may try to smuggle in and out of, of Gibraltar. Supplying fuel to drug boats has become a lucrative trade and a key part of the drug trafficking chain. So Steve is not the only cop trying to trace the source of these canisters. Supposed to be a scorcher today, mate. 27, I think. 27, yeah, today. Mikey Heat and Nathan Bamber Gates are on patrol together today. They have the power to stop anyone they think is supplying fuel. The law has recently changed in Gibraltar, uh, where they've reduced the amount of um, fuel that one can actually have or transport in their vehicles at any given time. Today, Something has aroused their suspicions. Tinted windows are illegal in Gibraltar, and they have just stopped a car that has them. Can you open up this back window for me as well, buddy? I'm just have a look who's in the back of the car. Right. There's the thing. Yeah. Step out a second. They're hiding something. Step out a second. Give us your... Give us your... Give us your... You OK. Put mate, don't do this. Put that there. Mate, don't do this. I know, mate. I saw. Come here. Yeah. Gibraltar cops Nathan and Mikey have stopped a car with tinted windows and have spotted something inside. OK, mate, there. don't do this. Mate, don't do this. I know, mate, that's all. Come here. You're under arrest, pal. All right? OK. You know why you're under arrest? Possession, no. legal possession of fuel. All right, transportation of fuel. Transportation of fuel, this is what I get to Come here. Look how much fuel's in the back of that vehicle there. Yeah. All right? You're not obliged to anything unless we're to do so. What you say may put into writing, giving evidence. Yeah, okay? Yeah. Do you think that's a legal way to transport fuel? I don't know if it's legal, but I think, no, 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 it's for a jet ski. There's a second man in the car. Keep your hands where you put your hands. 10, 16, 2. Uh, also, got to get your top down. Listen. What's in the back of the boot? Be honest with me. Uh, it's empty ones. Empty canisters? Yeah. Yeah? Oh, okay. Right, because you're pissed out your head. I'm not pissed. You, you yeah. seem like it, OK? No. Listen, it's be okay. quiet, right? Stop moaning, be quiet, no, end of no, it. Yeah, be yes. quiet, Ball. end of it, right? I'm going to hold you until the other van comes and puts you in a van. I'm just checking your pockets, it's all right? OK, bro, just oh, for Jerry comes a pistol. But I'm going to make sure you've got nothing else on you, mate. No, it's OK. Calm bro, down. No, no. I've been no, nice I am, you, calm down. Yeah. Nathan has found something on the second man. What's that? Just a bit of whiz. You know what whiz is? Definitely not weed. Whiz, yeah. whiz. Definitely not weed. Whiz, whiz. You're now under arrest? Yeah, now we're we we arresting you for being in possession of a Class A drug. Okay. Yes. I've uh, arrested on Class A because I'm not 100% sure what's within that bag. When we get back and he goes into the custody, there'll be a drugs test kit there, which will tell us whether it is a Class B Amphet or whether it is um, something else. OK. You know whiz? Turn around for me. In silly. Yeah, control from 215. One of my detainees are going to be arrested for, arrested for possession of Class A. Be quiet. Be quiet. Obviously, it's, uh, it's quite a serious offence at the end of the day because you're, you're aiding these um, drug suppliers or these tobacco suppliers uh, to um, continue in their illicit activities. There's a big narcotics uh, issue here where we have a lot of um, uh, narcotics come from Morocco. For a jet ski? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, obviously, there are ties with some of the locals here to these criminal organisations, um, and that does obviously create a challenge for us. There we go. Let's see. OK, so it looks like we appear to have Four more canisters. They are empty by the looks of it, but nevertheless, I'm sure these would have been filled up at some point. Just check one. Yeah. 
And as you can see, the actual boot has been stripped, if you have a look inside. Purposely, most likely, purposely for the transportation of these fuel canisters. The suspicion is that this fuel could be to supply smugglers, and Nathan wants to check the substance found on the passenger. Let's get it all done. Okay, happy with that. 5.02. Man. Yeah, 5.02. If it is Class A as Nathan suspects, then it could carry up to a seven year jail term. If it's Class B, it carries a maximum of five years. Oh, already. <laughs> so, yeah, it's Amphet, speed, whiz, whatever you call it, is class B and it's illegal. I'm going to de arrest you for the class A, possession for the class A. I'm going to re arrest you for being in possession of a class B drug. Okay? I'm not obliged to say anything unless you do so, but what you say may be put in writing and given evidence. But the story of the fuel cans being for a jet ski doesn't sit well with Mikey. What rationale do you have, really? What sort of honest, you know, reason can you give me for having these canisters in your vehicle? There is no legit reason. He's saying that it was to refuel his jet ski. Uh, there's a lot of fuel in there. More, we believe, more than uh, than exceeds the actual legal limit. Uh, so, on that basis, we'll be looking to uh, investigate the matter further. But whoever was waiting for this fuel isn't going to get it and a routine patrol in the sunshine has turned into something quite different. Today we've caught a couple of canisters which are full. Uh, it's, still, um, it's still a good outcome because at the end of the day, that's a couple of canisters which would have been used, we believe, um, in the refueling of ribs out at sea today. Whereabouts is it exactly? Cars for cars, just behind the back of couple rows. Literally handing something to a kid. The sight of an officer in uniform can influence how people behave. But today, neighbourhood officers Nick Ramage and his colleague are in plain clothes to see if they can covertly spot any offences. We just had a report from an off-duty officer of a person who's known to us. Um, who might potentially be dealing in the area of Zocker flank, so we're basically going to be heading there now and having a quick look. And if we can see him, have a little interaction and hopefully uh, start the day well. If you drop me off at the um, English Steps... Yeah, gotcha. ..and you go in... Go in the other end and drive in. Yeah. See you now. Tell your mate to stop now. Both of you. Stay where you are there. Mate, come here. What are you both doing here? Just finishing his granddad. Sorry? Just, just finishing my granddad. OK, we had a report. You by name and you by description, OK? You can do what you need to do. Okay, we're going to do what we need that's, to do. That's absolutely fine. Okay. Do you have anything? Just my bike as well. Well, wool. do you, either of you have anything on top? No, literally, no. Nick's okay. asking if they've any... got anything they shouldn't Will. have. Do you, either of you the have youth on, on the left has been found in possession of drugs previously. No, I don't have any I know, that's why the problem no, no, is no. I'm going to have to take you up to the station and get an appropriate adult down. Okay. No, 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 I don't have anything. Right. Virtue no, of your age? Yeah. And what's going on? That's, You're yeah. both going to have to come up. Why? Because we, we have to search you. Why, though? Well, like, that's, no, that's not fair. That is exactly what the rules no, are, man. That's not fair. You know I've never searched. They don't want to go to the police station okay. and insist they have no drugs. OK. There is, because someone's basically reported something, suspicious activity between the pair of you, and that something's been seen being exchanged Can between you. Can we get you. his granddad down here to prove that he, we've just been here with him? That I've just come? 
Is that fine? Can we get proof? This was 10 minutes ago, we got told. So just chill. I've been here five minutes. I've been here five minutes. I'm going to call your granddad. Just chill, relax. I've been here five minutes. Relax. Well, apparently, well, apparently someone you. reported something in exchange, apparently. And they don't believe that we were just sitting here with you. The suspect's granddad is now on his way. So Nick decides to give him one last chance to fess up to anything he's got. Look, no, boys, 100% straight. Have you got anything on top? Before anyone comes, now's the time to tell me. Hey, how are you doing? Problem, Nothing, just a member of public came through and basically identified by name with de exchanging something with a gentleman wearing black clothing, black bag. OK, we're just here, it's been called in. I'm just basically checking it out. And if... One second, please. Hello. It's his policing partner. He's moments away. Come, come around. Come. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. No, no, mate, no, no, he's got to stay. You've arrested him, have you? No, I haven't. I swear That's down. how he can come home? No, he can't, because he's been come detained on. for the purpose of a search. So, you've, no, you've arrested him? No, he's detained for the purpose of a search. I've just left his guys. OK. So, what I'm just explaining to you, him, them now is... Yeah? OK, just back up a little bit. Sorry. Away from me, please, get... The suspects are calm. But Grandad is about to lose his call. Cool. I'm being respectful to your grandson. I'm going to be respectful to These you. These are kids. I know they are. So what are you bugging them for? Because you've got nothing else better to do. Back up a little bit. Sorry. Away from me, please. Get. Neighbourhood officer Nick has stopped two young men after a member of the public reported suspicious activity. One of the youth's grandads has arrived, and he is not happy. It's just kids getting hassled. OK. Right? That's the way I'm seeing it as, a, as an adult, yeah? You're hassling kids because you're bored. Right. Simple as that. You, you're not even... You're a policeman, right. yeah? Right, now I'm going to speak to you. Yes, I'm a policeman. Yeah. Yes, now I'm going to speak to you, OK? They've been detained for the purpose of a search. Due to their age, I cannot search them in a public space. Yes? So you're telling me you're going to take them to the police station? No, I am trying to find a workable solution. Okay. They said they were with you. OK. OK, okay I appreciate that. Do I want to have to take these kids up, call parents and appropriate adults up so that I can get them searched? Is that a good use of my time, your time and their time? No. So we let drop the attitude and we then work to a workable solution. Is that all right with you? Thank you. Thank you. Right. Do you have anything on top? In front of your grandfather? Can you pass me your bag, please? Now, I'm allowed to do a die jog search, which is dangerous items, gloves, outer jackets and outer garments. This is classed as an outer garment. I, I can do anything which is not a personal invasive search on him. To hide, so, you know, this is what I want. To, I want to, let me just do one thing at a time, please. Yeah, of course. The young men have been clear. They have nothing on them. Right. When I ask you, do you have anything on top? When's the time to tell me? When I ask you if you have anything on top, when is the time to tell me? Sorry, no. There's nothing else. Now you understand. He will tell you we work on a trust basis, OK? I'm, I'm being dead. No. I didn't know you we were there. Yes, but you've got something in your pa cigarette packet, which is not what you said you had on you. I'm sorry, I didn't know you we were there. Things back in. Cannabis possession is taken very seriously by the Royal Gibraltar Police. In some cases, to be found in possession leads to a fine of up to £10,000 or up to 12 months in prison. Last year, the police made 135 arrests for cannabis possession, although not everyone was charged. You understand my frustration now? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Grandad's suddenly very quiet. What am I going to do with your grandson? I would have... Can I just explain something? Yeah. I... I know it's, it's, a, it's a serious thing. I also know it's not a, a big thing. His mum, I'm over here, that's his grandfather, his nan. His mum is about to have a child and she's dropping it today, tomorrow. I don't want to arrest a 15 year old kid and have them messed up for the next no. three years. I know what bored kids do. Yeah. And it's, there's no malice or there's no criminality involved in it. It's just the fact they're bored. There's, they don't think. Okay. Instead of staying in their bedroom and having a joint, they'll come out in the street, which is crazy. Yeah. So, and I don't. Do you have some idea? Yeah, of course I do. So, so you're with your grandfather. How long's he out for? Hmm? How long's he out for? I don't know, about two weeks, I think. When was the last time you saw him? Five months ago. Is this a nice impression? You called him on, knowing I'm going to search your stuff and you've got some joints in there. What are we going to do? 
I want to criminalise you for 0.3 of a gram. That's what it's going to be recorded as, 0.3 of a gram. So I need to criminalise you at age 15. I know she's about you about to be a brother. So think about that. You've got an example to set to your, your kid brother. How's that going to be? Yeah, the day time you were born, I spent the weekend in cells. And that's the reality. It's Friday. There's no court now till Monday. Is that worth your time? Your mum goes into labour. You don't see your kid brother. For what? I'm going to speak to my colleague. Nick spots potential further evidence. Was that yours over here or not? Uh, no, that's not mine. Whose was it? Huh? Whose was it? It could have been anyone. I know, it could have been. Only a DNA test or confession would prove who was smoking that particular joint. And Nick decides against hauling this first-time suspect down to the station to tell his parents there, as is usual in cases involving under-18s. Instead, he cautions the lad and gives him a stern ticking off. Do right by your mum, do right by your grandparents. Yeah? Here for a couple of weeks. You listening? He's here for a couple of weeks, set the right example. Let him know you are going to be an example to your kid brother. But start being the example, yeah? Please. It's all right? Okay. Have a good day. By virtue of the grandfather being present at the time of the search and it being found in the presence of his grandfather, we have already told a family member, or in this case an appropriate adult who is familiar with ties to the child, um, of the find. He was aware and we don't have to go through the process of having to call the parents in, inform them and formalise it. It is all about sort of explaining, engaging and educating the youth. It's not necessarily just about getting an arrest for the sake of an arrest and clogging up the courts with something which hopefully can be handled with stern warnings and uh, education. Oh, mate. Earlier on, customs team Yankee seized £400,000 worth of cannabis that was floating in the sea. Now, Executive Officer Arturo Asquez is at a secret location with the seized drugs. Only select members of the customs team have keys to this space. The cannabis they pulled out of the sea is joining the rest that never made it to its intended customers. As you can see, we've got uh, cannabis from, from various seizures we've had, uh, a bit from chasing vessels out at sea, where they've dumped their cargo over the side and we've had to pick up on our way back or just been out there and found it afloat. This is just what they seized in the last few months. 860 kilos worth here. Each of those bows is just over 30 kilos. These can range anywhere between 25 kilos to that blue one there's 14. We've had up to 50, just over 50 kilos of bow. A large portion of the cannabis here came from one job, a boat sailing in the harbour while its owner pretended to fish. What basically happened with that vessel in particular is they went across to, to Morocco. The, the bows in, in that form were loaded onto the boat. So once they come off the shoreline, what they did is they fit some of those bows in the hull, uh, but so to be able to fit more inside that boat and come across without being noticed, they cut them open and basically put them into what we see here. Uh, so each of those are roughly about 100 grams a slab. But the cannabis can't stay in this small room forever. And neither can El Toro. At the moment, I'm getting a bit dizzy. <laughs> but yeah, as you can see, uh, we've got the extractor fans going and everything else. And still, the, the smell is pretty overpowering. So uh, we used to dump it out at sea, but because of the environment and that, it all now gets uh, taken up to the incinerator and burnt. The drugs will be escorted to their final destination. The smugglers were hoping their cannabis will go up in flames, but not the flames in this place, an industrial incinerator. The final resting place on a long journey from Morocco to Jim. What a waste of money, eh? Do three bags at a time. 
um, and it will total up to about 200 kilos. So it'll be a bit of a long-winded process, could take a while. Thank you, dude. As you can see, there's plenty. It, yeah, to be fair, like, it is a fraction of what we end up retrieving from sea or from other cases, whether that be at sea or land. I mean, this is not even a quarter of what, what we're dealing with. And you can just get a good sense of the quantity. So we're going to use two days a week for the next month, I believe, to dispose of at least 200 kilos worth of, of cannabis resin in particular. Zero. 14.5. OK, that's three. That's the first three. That's a lot of money going straight up in smoke. Further this way, as part of making sure that the process is correct and everything's working correctly, so we've already placed the bags in there to be burned, and myself or other officers will just peek through here to make sure that you can see yeah, it's all burning correctly. The team are burning several million pounds worth of cannabis that will never hit the streets of Europe. Yep, so that's now being burned away, but like I said, that's only three bags of, of 18 that we've got here today. Got it. Got it. Yeah. In this episode, the suspected dealer in magic mushrooms is on bail while the police await forensic results on the mushrooms which are being analysed in a UK lab. The driver with the jerry cans of fuel is currently in prison on another matter. This matter will be taken up on his release. The car's passenger was bailed pending further inquiries, but so far he has not been charged as he failed to attend his bail meeting. of Gibraltar, we are surrounded by water. We stop any illegal activity, be it smuggling, could be anything from uh, cigarettes to, to drugs. Another blue lights over there as well. Two lots of blue lights. We have information that there's probably maybe four to five small vessels heading in for the smuggling. Um, but I've immediately turned around and headed back. That's because we're being watched uh, and they know exactly where we are. That makes it the task all the more difficult. We're just going to hang out and uh, once we get the info that they're uh, carrying out this task, we'll uh, try and intercept. This goes on nightly. They're trying to fish us now to see if we're going to react. Roger that, copy, Dan. So that's three coming in, done one already in location. Get your camera ready, because we're going to get a chase for sure now. Gibraltar, one of Britain's last overseas territories. Over 30,000 people call it home, but millions more visit every year enjoying a little bit of Britain under the Mediterranean sun. Lying at the very tip of mainland Europe, with a border to Spain in the north, and Morocco just nine miles south across the water. Jib's 430 customs and police officers are tasked with protecting this critical gateway between Africa and Europe. Tackling everything from smugglers to tourists in trouble, saving lives, enforcing the law, and clamping down on crime. They are the cops on the rock. Roger. 
John Cartwright and Gibraltar Customs Team Yankee are on night patrol. They have just spotted a boat they suspect is trying to exit the harbour and cross to Spain with tens of thousands of illicit cigarettes. Get your camera ready because we're going to get a chase for sure now. Torch, where's Torch? Got the Torch? contain tobacco heading for sale in Spain. Cigarettes are around 30% cheaper in Jib, so there's big profits to be made reselling them there. Keep them inside, keep them inside. Ah! The boat has sped out of Gibraltar's territorial waters. So the minute they're behind us, they're, they're zigzagging left and right, and uh, left and right, back and forth, and the minute they get a window, phew, those little things are really nippy, they can go. We've got to get there quick. But the team think there's a second boat waiting to dock in Gibraltar to load up. They come in, then they go out to that way. OK, you don't see it, it's back through the cover. Liam Franco alerts land-based officers. Roger that copy. We've got to see it approaching. Just give us a heads up. Right, gang. John suspects the tobacco gangs have spotters in the harbour. Do you see? They know we're here. That's why they went back. That's how difficult it is. It's a cat and mouse. They won't move now until they know we're gone out the area or at a distance where they can manage to squeeze something in before us attempting to... Uh... One heading in. One heading. Um, yeah, roger that, copy. One heading. Yep. Are you there? It, and it's heading in to pick up the tobacco. The smugglers are bought. It can't go in and load up as customs team Yankee will follow it and arrest the crew on shore. Job done. Tonight, the team have prevented at least one smuggling boat from carrying out its mission. We have limits, so yeah, it's uh, very satisfying when we do actually get some. Back on dry land, there are problems of a different kind. We've got a report of a Yamaha Cygnus, which has been stolen. Um, the owner thinks it may have been moved yesterday. There are more registered vehicles than people on Gibraltar's super congested streets. Scooters and motorbikes are everywhere. The trouble is, thieves like them too. Looks like uh, maybe somebody's got access or has been able to hotwire it and they might have used it multiple times. 
So we're going to go down and check the CCTV footage and we'll see if we can actually identify the youth that was seen uh, actually taking it. The bike was taken from an underground car park in a housing block. Veteran officer Stuart Anson is on the case. My colleague is the one I think I'm the other day. Okay. Is there another camera, the, the two, the, the boy and the girl that walk through that way? Is there another camera that picks them up leaving? Yeah. I just go back a fraction and we'll... What camera was this? I know who it is. It's a girl and a boy. Yeah, I know who it is. We've got one possible suspect. I'm going to go and check round where he lives now and see if I can find the actual stolen bike itself. He's checking a regular hiding place used by bike thieves. Yeah, I'm just going to check the top car park. That's sometimes used as well. Um, search all the way that way. Remember, some of the parking spaces are doubles. So they go right the way back. The car park is full of bikes but they're not the ones Stuart's after. So it's onto a second location. I'll just park up. And I'll quickly check the ones on there, and there's loads more there as well. We'll check all of them while we're here. Word comes in that a second bike has also been taken from the same block. It's just a question of trying to find these bikes. The team hit all the spots where they suspect the bikes might be. But so far, it's a fruitless search. There's only so many places I can check. No, it's not in the area because we'd have found it. It would pass on both of those registrations to the night shift, yeah. ask them to do a sweep of the usual areas. But as their shift comes to an end, they get new intel on a different suspect. And it's not the man Stuart suspected. Stuart decides to make one more stop do a lap around the area of part of the information in that area. Time for. We've got another partial sort of information of who it might be. Because of that, we're now going to go and check another housing estate. And but unfortunately, it is a very big estate. And we're going to go and have a look and see what we can find. Um, bear in mind that if they have stolen the bike, or two bikes, they might now be going home. There's loads of bikes here. All over the place, yeah. Oh, and there's loads more behind this block as well. So now we'll both get down and have a look. One woman stops Stuart to explain why her husband's bike is parked in a restricted zone. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah, we're, look, we're looking all around everywhere. Really? So that's the reason why he's not parking it here, okay? Yeah, no, I'm not bothered about that. It's lucky they stopped. We got them. Yeah, 10 4, we've got both bikes. These are the bikes they've been searching for. Let's not catch them. Let's keep forensic uh, an option. Stuart Anson of the Royal Gibraltar Police has spent the day doggedly searching for two stolen bikes. Just as he was about to finish his shift, he got word to check one last location. Yeah, 10 4, we've got both bikes. Yeah, let's not touch them. Let's keep forensic uh, an option. His persistence has paid off. You can see where it's been levered up to get to the front, both of them. 
If you look at it, yeah. it's been leaving up and then getting to jump to jump start them. It's a partial result. We've got the bikes, but we haven't got the people that stole them yet. The bikes will be checked for fingerprints and other evidence back at base. Keep going, keep going. I'll do you. And finding the bikes where they did means Stuart's intel about the possible thief is also likely to be accurate. Twelve hours later, response team officer Terry McCormack is out looking for the suspected thief. Just trying to locate them. They could be anywhere uh, within the states here in Gibraltar. Locals are tired of the thefts. We've had bikes stolen and thieves so, uh, being removed okay. from bikes. Luckily, we've not took anything out of mine, but right. it's been happening for about a week. Yeah, we're, we're on it now. Elsewhere on the estate, there's a report of a youth trying to break into a car. Have you camera? Because the thing is, I already told you, I checked one car, which was the exact same model, and it wasn't my uncle's car. Have they got quick access to the CCTV there now? The security yeah, guard. Yeah, the youth claims he was looking for his uncle's car and went to the wrong vehicle by mistake. The police have detained him, but they don't think he's the bike thief. As Terry leaves the estate, he gets a lead over the radio. It's just one of the, the lads that's suspected to be involved in the theft of the motorcycles. Um, I think they've located him in the estate now. Well, they're not made to be comfortable, but they are going to go back on the bike, mate. This man is the prime suspect for the two bikes found yesterday. It's on my hand. Oh, you're pushing the ball on your own bed. Anything else on you? I've got nothing on you. Know, me. Do you know why it's like that? Why? Because you were resisting when I was... I'm not resisting. Back, you were resisting. I'm not when, resisting. When the cuffs weren't locked, mate, yeah, and you've managed to tighten it on yourself. I just want to get now, That's why. they're absolutely I'm fine. Back to sin, so I'm sin. If forensic evidence gathered from the bike and CCTV proved the suspect is guilty, he could be looking at a spell in prison. Customs officers in Gibraltar's maritime team know firsthand that the pursuit of smugglers on the seas demands a high level of skill. Maneuvering boats in a high-speed chase requires training from experienced officers like Arturo Asquez. Oh. <laughs> Basically, uh, Liam's uh, shortly going to become one of our coxswains. So what we're going to do is we're going to take him out, start letting him drive under supervision uh, our bigger vessels and uh, put him through his paces. I've been the customs officer for five years. I've been in the marine section for five as well. So the minute I came in, I've been in the marine section. And hopefully I do well. <laughs> Step on board. So the plan is to go out there, use our training vessel. Uh, so we're going to do, like, just pace it from behind, and then go into a mock chase and see how that goes. A little nervous, but thankfully, yeah, I've got a good crew behind me, so it should be, so it should be a su successful day, hopefully. Ready to release the bow? The boss casts off while the trainees set sail in the fastest boat in their fleet. So all we'll do is we'll go out, full of Tango free. Yep. And uh, just stick behind him and then we'll do a mock chase. Sounds good.
taking one of the main interceptors for the first time. So thankfully I've got my executive customs officer next to me, giving me some good tips. Yeah, cross your heart. <laughs> that is pretty good if not it wouldn't be then. I prefer standing. That's all right, huh? Yeah. What you can do is you can win the seat with your legs. Yeah, yeah. Liam's in for a tough time. He's up against another top officer, John Charles, who's in a boat with a chequered history. That's a training rib that was uh, confiscated a couple of years ago. Uh, basically, it was uh, allegedly loaded with cannabis. They, they bowed everything over the side, so jettisoned all the cargo. And if I'm not mistaken, it ended up in Catalan Bay. So they rammed it up the beach, uh, ran ashore. So the vessel was then forfeited to the Crown. Cracking little boat. <laughs> be a, a lot of holding on and a lot of bouncing around. So, yeah, brace. Brace, brace, brace. Yeah, yep, yep. How's it going? is capable of reaching a speed of 50 knots, the equivalent of almost 60 miles an hour. Stay outside of his way to actually do it. No further forward than this. I'm getting if he's going to turn around and grab you, yeah? Yeah. A little bit closer to him. Not to his way, in line with way itself. It's all about getting close without colliding. Yeah, well done. Make sure he doesn't slow down too much, then we overtake yeah. yeah? Good. And again. Stay here, stay here so you can't turn. Good, well done. Well done. Good. Same again, drop back a bit. Drop back a bit. Good. Same again, bring it round to pull. Well done. Liam is forcing the experienced officer in front to really push his boat to stay ahead. Yeah, I do feel in control of the situation, for sure. I'm not committed, which is, exactly. a, is allowing me to get out of a uh, dodgy situation. Once you're up there, that's it. Yeah. But in the lead boat, John Charles is trying a trick. By keeping just close enough, Liam has avoided losing sight of the target amongst the big ships. Hold up! Go back a bit, go back a bit. Good. The aim is to teach officers to safely intercept boats or to prevent them from landing their illicit cargo. He's gonna bring it back round to the Don't turn yet, don't turn yet. Yeah. Now, now, now. Yeah, I see, I see. Yeah? Yep. Yeah. I would have overshot it then. Easy, easy, under control all the time. Yep. Yeah. Suddenly, the chase comes to a halt. Well done, well done. Customs officer Liam Franco is being trained to pursue drug smuggling boats on the Strait of Gibraltar. Good man. Careful we don't go round the other way. A little bit closer to him. Not to his weight, in line with weight itself. The boat he is chasing has stalled. 
The bush is gone. The what has? The bush is gone. The bush? Uh, basically, inside the prop, yeah. what you've got is a mechanism. Right. So if the prop hits something, instead of ripping the gearbox off, it's like yeah. a bush, so that goes, it's a cut. Right. The pursuit was so intense, the runaway boat has lost the propeller. So we have to change the propeller on it now, sir. Broken it. Yeah, broken it. Well done, Liam. <laughs> yeah, I swear, everything I'm involved in, something breaks. I'm sick of it. If that would have been a real-life chase, they would have had to stop their boat and we would have uh, arrested them and taken the boat. Another training boat, so... Yeah. The engine's completely bust, so he's not been able to, to get any power whatsoever. So now we're going to tow him back to base with a side tow. Happy days. So if we go back now, there's a... Yeah. Just make sure he gets back safely and then we'll shoot off and do a patrol. Sounds good. I've learned a lot today. Every day's a learn. Considering it being a training day, I've had a bit of everything. I've had a bit of chasing, I've had a bit of towing, and it's a good exercise, good training. But, um, but yeah, hopefully we can get this vessel up and running again pretty soon to continue our training. When we get back, you'll be learning how to make a perfect cup of tea as well. <laughs> Let's wash the boat down. Nine miles of sea separate Gibraltar from Africa, and migrants regularly try to make the crossing in the hope of entering Spain and the rest of Europe. They don't always make it alive. Unfortunately, over recent weeks, we've been getting more and more. Obviously, the weather starts getting better, uh, and more people try and come across the straits. To be fair, they normally try and aim for mainland Spain, because obviously once they're in Spain, they're in Europe, and they're free to roam around as best they can, or, or a lot easier for them to roam around. But every, every so often, certainly over the past couple of weeks, we've had a good four or five incidents where we've, we've had to go and recover immigrants. When we do go out on a call like that, totally expect the unexpected. Uh, we don't know if we're going to get any people that have already passed away when we get there. Uh, any children on board, which is really, really scary. So when a call comes into customs, it could be a matter of life and death. A boat has been reported in trouble three miles off Europa Point. It's made of wood and has no engine. It's sinking. John. Arturo and the team drop everything and scramble to the rescue. It's clear the boat is sinking fast, so the crew have to act quickly to save those on board. sort of assessed my vision, so to speak, and seeing who would like, possibly be hypothermic but not responding so much. I think that they're shivering, they're, they're okay-ish, you know, because that's your body's reaction to, to, to get, try and give your body some heat. Luckily, we, we carry a, a pretty extensive first aid kit on board and, like, space blankets uh, and all the other equipment we need to deal with situations like that. So straight away, we just brought them on, on board. Uh, wrapped him up in space blankets. The five men are rushed back for medical assessment. Then it's over to the police and immigration authorities to decide their fate. I've come across that immigrants a few times now. Not everyone has been alive in, in that situation. Um, but uh, fortunately, in this situation, all five were saved. So uh, thumbs up to the lads, really. It's good that we know we've saved a few lives. But at the same time, we know that they must be really, really desperate to put themselves in that situation in the first place. So, yeah, it's, it's a brilliant, brilliant feeling of saving someone's life. But at the same time, it makes you realise how lucky we are here in where we live. Calls like this remind John and his colleagues why they serve in the Customs Maritime Unit. Very many jobs you have um, get monotonous. Um, in this case, no monotony because no two days are the same. And one day it's immigrants, next day it's... Uh, rescuing a vessel, uh, it might be sinking, 
next day it's drugs, it's, 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 it's smuggling, it's, you know, going out on the road and, and helping out with one of the colleagues that may be in distress or whatever, you know, so, so eat no two days are the same. Response team officers Jordan Ricano and Terry McCormack are about to embark on a 12-hour night shift. For tonight, we're the main vehicle for dealing with any arrests, you know, bringing people up to station, and any big incidents, any big fights, whatever, will show up to it straight, straight up. As a patrol van driver, I mean, we pretty much get sent to every job, and if anybody needs to come up, then we just deal with it. Community policing like this is not just a matter of always enforcing the letter of the law. The cops have to deal with a range of cases and with people in a variety of emotional and mental health states. In the past few weeks, since regulations have been loosened because of the most of the population being vaccinated. You can tell week by week, more people and more people have been going out. The um, restrictions are pretty much all gone except for masks in shops and inside establishments. And people just wanna, you know, get all that pent up tension out. They wanna go out, they wanna drink. They wanna do everything they haven't been able to do in the past year and a bit. And obviously that results in some people taking a bit too far. Drink driving, fights, all sorts. Yeah, great one. We've got the report that there's a girl screaming in Victoria Stadium shouting, call the police. Yeah, 10-4. We're in a 10-2. We're in uh, Queensway now. We're Yeah, same for Queensway. Some never screamed on the boot in the four guys. One unit is already on the scene, and officers have pepper sprayed the man. Officers try to establish what's happened. From what we've been told, he's grabbed um, this lady around the neck or something. The alleged victim is the detained man's girlfriend. We've been in Bruno's, we've just had one drink. I went to get my phone, we were walking this way. Yeah. Here we started fighting. I was going to leave and just you guys sh showed up. That's okay. basically the story. Listen, calm down, mate. Calm down. All right, you're just... Something's happened. She's been working, he's turned up, he'd been drinking all day. Um, he's very intoxicated and some kind of... Um, Arguments ensued between them, and it's ended up in, in the arrest. They'll probably have to put him straight into the cells because he's not clearly not in a fit state to be processed. Um, he's drunk and he's kicking off. He's not going to be processed straight away. With the suspect arrested, Terry and Jordan are on to the next call. He'll be arrested for drunk and disorderly, most likely, and possibly an assault, depending on if the, the female makes a report or not. Gibraltar cops Terry and Jordan are heading to where a group of youths have been reported to be causing a disturbance. Yeah, cop, it was it around the back of Edinburgh State. This is Edinburgh back here. And this is where we've had the they had the complaint of the kids causing trouble. See him? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a lot of people. <laughs> well, guys, we've received a complaint 
of a gathering of people making a noise here. All yeah. right, we've came here, you've been asked to leave, and you guys are still here after what being asked to leave, yeah? Yeah, but what's the problem? The problem is that you there's been a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Problem we speak. Sorry. Because we don't know where to go. We don't want to be out. We're here, we live here. You can go anywhere else. Yeah, yeah, but... Where we go? Anywhere else, mate. Anywhere else, We've been having complaints from people that are here, all right? If you guys have got nothing else to do here, then can you please just go somewhere else? All right? Thank you. Are these gas canisters your guys as well? No? Sure. There's telltale signs that someone's been inhaling nitrous oxide, or laughing gas, as it's known. Police think they've convinced the youths to move, but one keeps arguing. How old are you? 18. 18, vale? You're not a kid. All that spitting, this, yeah. how to do this and that. But we give you orders, we give you orders, and you listen to them. None of you have listened to orders since we got here, and it's finished there. We're police officers, we're not well, anyone that you... Look at us, we're all the Right, there. okay, well, it's, no, it's finished. Now, now, the joke, now, the joke is, now the joke is finished that you're in handcuffs. That's when the joke is finished for you. Well, that's too bad. What joke? You took too the joke with me, but like I got Yeah, you've been taking it to I told you too many times you had to stop f***ing about me. Okay? And now you're saying stupid and you're under caution. You're going to fall like that. You're going to arrest me. You're going to arrest me for like that. What's wrong? Let's say something. Well, it's going to be easy against you, younger. What, what, what did I do? What did I do wrong? See, stuff like that, stuff spitting on the floor. Did you see him shout at me saying, ah, arrest that guy, arrest him, sir? You don't have to pass, bro. Get past him, like that. I told you three things. Don't get on the phone, don't have it. Yo, I told you, I told you. Don't leave here. Don't leave here. I told you, man, I won. It's enough to save you. You could avoid a bit. He's been arrested for obstruction. Um, I think he's been detained for the purpose of a search. And whilst he's been detained, he's been he's been on cooperative uh, with the officer that was dealing with him. So he's been arrested for obstruction. Jordan thinks the antisocial behaviour they are encountering is linked to widespread frustration at COVID restrictions. The youths driving around on their bikes and cars, uh, stopping up near a stage with their music, with their cannabis, whatever. And that could happen on a typical Friday night in Gibraltar, but now after COVID, it's that times 10, because everyone just wants to do it all over again because they haven't been able to do it in the past year. So after quickly dropping off the youth, Terry and Jordan are needed back on the streets. Moments later, they spot a car that shouldn't be on the road. The man inside is known to police. So this guy's documents, right. his MOT is expired on the vehicle since um, 4th of the 5th, 2020. So a, a year almost. Uh, we're just going to talk to him. Yeah, what do you want? I've already told you what I want, mate. What I, want, want? I want the documents for the vehicle. Um, insurance documents for it. I'm going to show you now. Give me the... What are you doing? I'm just taking the keys out of the ignition, mate. What permission you got, mate? What, to take the keys out of the yeah, ignition? what permission you got? I've got the permission, yeah, mate, because I've got you stopped. <laughs> Why are you stressed at me? People have abuse for me, hey, yeah. I'm losing it. I'm losing yeah, it. Help me, sir. Yo, tranquilo, no. Relax, relax. Vale. Relax. Yo, tranquilo, no, que estoy harto ya. He's used to being stopped by us because he's always, always driving around like a lunatic, always causing problems, you know, always in the wrong place, you know, wrong time, like he says. And um, the waterworks came out, you know, he thinks that's going to change how we deal with him, he thinks, you know, crying and saying that we've stopped him a hundred times is going to change anything. If you commit an offence a hundred times, we're going to stop you a hundred times and that's the end of that. Zero. Listen. Listen. You people, don't get me in prison, you're not going to be, you're not going to come down. Okay, I'm making my life in the prison with them. Putting aside the heated emotions, Terry tries to bring the discussion back to the matter in hand. <laughs> Listen, mate. 
I'm here because the vehicle has shown up as having no MOT since 2020, right? You don't have the documents here for the car. All I'm going to do is, I'm going to give you a slip here that says for you to bring the documents. Five, yeah, five days to reduce. You know how it goes. All right? So there's no reason for you to be acting. You bring the documents up to the station within five days, and then we're going to leave you alone, all right? All right? They don't know if he drove here in the car, but with no valid documents, the man will have to leave it where it is. There's no sign of this night of pent-up frustration cooling down. Terry and Jordan are held by a Swedish tourist in trouble. She's on the phone to her boyfriend. Can I call him again to see the answer this time? Put on speaker, put on speaker for us. After a long wait, someone answers, but it's a very weird call. Where is he? Where is he? Ask him where he is. We met, we... What is he saying? He, he says it doesn't matter. I don't know where, where, where am I? Where am I? Where are you? Tell him we're going to take, take you to him. Does he speak English? Uh, yes. Police and plot him a day. As soon as he hears the police, the caller hangs up. Do you want to jump jump in with us and we'll go yes. we'll go that way and see yes. see if he's there? I don't know what's happening. Just just I, I if he if he calls again, just tell him that nothing. We're not gonna arrest him or, no, or anything. No, no, no. Just tell him that we just want to make sure he's fine. But he probably thinks we were gonna arrest him, and I can only imagine that's probably because he's had a fight in the camp. Oh well, also the information uh, leads us to believe that he's had a fight, and he probably thinks that we have. Um, a power to arrest him. There's no need to arrest him because he's had an argument. Outside the military camp, a policeman and a staff member claim to have met the boyfriend. And he's, he's went outside the camp. Yeah, yeah, we, we threw him out, we threw him out. We grabbed him, threw him out. And then he started running in the camp. It's a mystery why he was even at the camp. Shall I get one of these guys to come with me so we can see him around the way? Yeah. But the witness is quite vocal. Okay. Your boyfriend's drunk. Say so, no, we've, we've established that, okay. You wanna go find him? I'll, I'll, I'll show you who he is. Well, you go with that guy there, mate, yeah? Go with me and we'll go around. There you go. Just like a go The witness travels in a different car to keep him separated from the girl as they go in search of her missing boyfriend. So he's outside the camp somewhere. Right, this guy here just... And Terry wants the witness gone. See that young lad there? Tell him to step away because he's just going to cause an aggravation. The boyfriend doesn't sound like he did on the phone. Too many drinks? Yeah, too many drinks. Yeah, that's too right. Hello? Come, come with us, mate. We'll drop you off. Yeah. Unless you guys are going to do it. The witness decides to get out of the police car. There's clear. some unresolved tension. Yeah, he's a real hey, gentleman. No, he's yeah. going away. Don't worry about him. He's All right, real let's get him in here. Real gentleman. <laughs> he's a real gentleman. Listen. He's going to be in the back where he's from. He can go home to me if you want to. Mate, no, just jump in the car before you end up in trouble. Oh, jump, yeah, yeah, oh. jump in the car. Oh, OK. Yeah, uh, you're going you got, you got to the hotel with your girlfriend. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The boyfriend is still angry, and the witness won't leave. You can go, mate. No, but I've got a funny feeling, mate, that you might end up in trouble if you hang around. <laughs> but with boyfriend and girlfriend reunited, the search is over and the busy night patrol is finally done. 
the cops have defused a volatile situation. The thing is, every now and again on Fridays and Saturdays, we'll get one call of a drunk guy who looks like he's dead on the street, and it's, it's just a case of moving them along. We're not going to arrest every person who's just drunk and acting stupid on the street, obviously, otherwise we'd have the cells full. Um, but yeah, this was the bizarre call for tonight. In this episode, two of the five migrants rescued from the sinking boat by customs officers have been deported. Three are still awaiting deportation. I think I'm reporting now. I'm reporting now. Okay. You report. The man arrested in connection with the bike theft was bailed. The case continues. Thank you. The man pepper sprayed was arrested for disorderly conduct while intoxicated and accepted a police caution. comes now. Yeah. And there's the exchange. The exchange is over, out he comes, he just walks off. We've instigated an investigation with regards to a local courier, local supplier. This is an individual who works and is employed locally, although he resides in Spain, he's a Spanish national. He brings coke across the border and he supplies it throughout the course of his working day. Uh, plan is to intercept him on his way to work. He's gonna come through the border, we don't know whether he starts work at six or seven. As soon as you see the vehicle, give it to probably about the North Barrier, pull up behind it, just get on the radio. We're going to make it look like the subject is going to be stopped for traffic. So for yourselves, the intercept, just extreme caution. I have put the risk of flight to be high. If he is carrying a lot of coke, I don't think he's going to just stand by and let you guys find it. Let's go. Gibraltar one of Britain's last overseas territories. Over 30,000 people call it home, but millions more visit every year, enjoying a little bit of Britain under the Mediterranean sun. Lying at the very tip of mainland Europe, with a border to Spain in the north, and Morocco just nine miles south across the water, Jib's 430 customs and police officers are tasked with protecting this critical gateway between Africa and Europe. Tackling everything from smugglers to tourists in trouble, saving lives, enforcing the law, and clamping down on crime. They are the cops on the rock. I absolutely hate waking up at this time in the morning. It's 5 a.m. Detective Sergeant Jerry Martinez and his team from the drug squad are on a covert operation. They plan to stop a suspected cocaine dealer. What this person does, he is a courier, however, he, he also supplies it, as opposed to others who bring in the drugs on behalf of another. So we're looking to find the drugs already prepared for sale, individual wraps, um, you know, prepared in bundles. So I'm hoping, because it's Friday ahead of the weekend, he's going to bring in more, um, and he uh, supplies whilst he's at work. So the likelihood is he's going to bring it across the frontier. All the cocaine in Gibraltar comes across the frontier in some shape, way or form. We don't produce anything here. Undoubtedly, he purchased it in Spain. It's cheaper to purchase in Spain. It's a lot easier to, to get your hands on it in Spain than it is here. It's a big operation involving customs officers too. Jerry is with Detective Constable Byron Shute. There are five other officers in unmarked vehicles close to the Spanish border. At the moment, we're just monitoring uh, traffic coming into Gibraltar. And yeah, we've got people dotted up the whole way between here and where he works, so 
hopefully he'll fall into our net. The suspected dealer is believed to be traveling by motorbike, but the officers keep an eye on all the morning commuters. Jogging. <laughs> Stupid waste of time. And anyone who could also be out waiting to buy drugs. It's looking for us, I think. I think he's probably just checking what we're doing. That's how he's on the telephone. Yeah. He's probably just packed up in here. Sat on the wall and I look at us. He dropped him off, he's walked that way, now he's walked back again. I'm almost convinced he's just looking at us, bro. Operations like this require a lot of time and resources, and there's no guarantee of a result. It doesn't always come off in drug squad sometimes. You'll spend a couple of weeks hiding in a bush or a boot of a car somewhere watching something, and then nothing happens, and it can be very frustrating. But when it does happen, knowing that they're going to get what they deserve and the courts are going to sentence them accordingly, uh, then it's a fantastic job. It's now 7 a.m. Commuters are starting to cross the border in large numbers. We're getting a lot of movement now. 15,000 people make the journey every day. But will the suspect be one of them? Lionel Jerry. We've got a lot of workers coming in vehicles. If you could start checking vehicles with people you see in uniforms. All stations, parking vehicle is heading your location. Yeah, copy that. Lionel, do you copy? Yeah, sort of this one friend, what side? Passing my test now. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, the super dink. The super dink, Lionel. Okay, go on, let's see. Gray or white? Purple. As another team followed the suspect on his bike, Jerry's unit has to catch up at a safe enough distance to remain unnoticed. Uh, vehicles heading up like wall. Copy. If the man suspects he's being tailed, he could dump the drugs or do a runner. I've got your visual, Craig. Yeah, what's we'll that? But this morning, not everyone on the road is in a hurry. Oh, come on, you penguin. Let's go. Overtake him. Space Cadet, come on. <laughs> Craig, go down. Lionel, Jerry, are you danger close? Can you communicate? The suspect has led the police to a car park. He appears to be meeting a contact. OK, let's uh, get this person stopped by uniform, if you haven't already. Jerry and Byron race to the scene. The police on motorbikes swoop in to arrest the suspected dealer. There he is. OK, confirmative, he's got the drugs. Uh, control from 171. Okay. Advise custody. We got uh, 1061 for intent to supply importation of Class A. We'll be bringing them in in our vehicle over. So I don't want to touch it too much, but uh, as you can see, we got a pouch full of wraps of coke. So there you go. Good result. Um, however, he has had maybe uh, 10, 15 seconds to hand over. But the second suspect, who Byron believes was here to carry out a drug deal, has vanished. There was a transaction scene right before we uh, picked him up, and it was maybe worth going after the other bloke, but he's in the wind now. Just be a conversation for another day with that chap. We got the main target. We've got him back to rights, man, so... See. We've got enough anyway here, so I'm satisfied with that. OK, guys, let's run it up. Let's get out of the way. We're attracting attention. As the suspect is taken into custody, the team returned to the station to check over the goods he was hiding. This has been in his jacket pocket, I believe, and he's had it in this pouch. The wraps to the right are the smaller ones, maybe half gram or gram deals, we'll soon find out. And uh, they were in the front pocket, and the wraps to the left, the larger ones, I think either going to be one or two gram deals, maybe more, a little bit more, not much, was in the main pocket. So uh, he's admitted straight away, he's handed that over to law enforcement when he's been intercepted. So um, I think he knows 
the future is not bright for him at the moment, so. With these tests, if you get like an indication of a, a color blue like we're getting here, that's a positive for cocaine. 20 grams, I'm happy to go with that. 20 grams overall. Smashing results. The drugs have a street value of over 1,200 pounds. For the suspected dealer, the reality of his situation has hit home. He's extremely worried. He's very nervous. I think it's slowly sinking in the fact that he is looking at, um, you know, some serious prison time. Uh, I mean, we're talking years now. We're not talking about months. And you can see his whole world is very slowly crumbling apart. Uh, but this is somebody who's been active for quite some time, and he's made a lot of money from it. So, you know, these are the consequences for those sort of actions. And it's not solely supply, and he's also imported it, which is a very, very serious charge. It's an aggravating factor here in Gibraltar. So um, I have no doubt he will be dealt with uh, uh, very sternly by the courts. For ambitious officers in the Royal Gibraltar Police, there's a range of training programs to undertake if they want to graduate. It's no easy ride getting to grips with guns or getting stuck into self-defense. Down, 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 down. But every rookie cop has to undergo one particularly unpleasant challenge before they qualify. Guys, listen up. Are you all OK to continue? Yes, Today we're doing captor exposure for the recruits. Clean, 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 captor spray is another one of the defense tools used by the police in Gibraltar. The main reason you expose recruits to this is to get them used to what the psychological and physical effects of the spray actually is, so they can provide the best aftercare on any subject that is exposed to it. Kiana Costa is one of the new recruits. I'm just going to get captor sprayed now, see how it feels. Obviously, so we can have like an idea of like the full effect. So yeah, I'm not looking forward to it. <laughs> and as part of the training, she's about to experience a face full of it herself. Okay, next one. At the Royal Gibraltar Police Test Centre, the new recruits are being shown the effects of captor spray. Okay, next one. It's time for Kiana to take the hit. Next. Safety officer in. Go. Get the wall torn up. Carry for the water, carry for the water. The quicker you open your eyes, the quicker the actual chemical itself will start to die off. On the last day of training for these officers. Safety officer in, go ahead. There isn't a dry eye in the house. My eyes are burning. My throat really hurts. I opened my mouth, unfortunately. So I got the spray in my mouth as well. Between 2019 and 20, there was a combined total of 29 reported assaults on police officers in Gibraltar, making the captor spray a vital safety tool. Getting better now, much better. Still got like a really burning sensation in my nose and my throat. But the eyes are much better. I can definitely see again. <laughs> I mean, this is really effective. It's good to know that we've got like this kind of weapon on top. My face is still on fire. No issues with this class. They've been, you know, 100% enthusiasm throughout. They'll make really good coppers. <laughs> 11 million visitors travel to Gibraltar every year, enjoying the sun and the nightlife. But with over 30,000 locals to police too, it's up to the cops to mop up when people take it to the extreme, particularly at the weekend. After 20 weeks of training, Kiana is now a fully qualified police officer. 
it's been a crazy couple of months. I mean, I'm loving it, don't get me wrong. It's amazing, my shifts. I've got a really good set of people around me. I've always got help. I've been on beats, town, doing a bit of everything, really. Which is good, because you learn different stuff. And, um, yeah, I mean, as to confidence, the more you attend to a certain kind of incident, like, the easier it becomes. But you do get nervous when you attend to any job because you never know what you're going to be dealing with. This evening, she's crewed for a night shift with PC Ryan Green. Friday night, we are now the responsive van crew, me and Kiana. Friday night, obviously, bring around anything, really, but usually on a bank holiday weekend, a lot of people decide to go up the coast. So they go up to, to Spain for the weekend. So hopefully that will get rid of quite a lot of numbers in the drinking areas. Ryan may have spoken too soon, as the first job has just come through, a suspected drunk at a hotel bar. We just had a call of a possibly intoxicated male. He's refusing to leave, and the staff has called us up. So we're going to ever so kindly ask him to leave, and hopefully he does. Intoxicated people are extremely time-consuming for police, as most incidents require more than one officer to attend. I've just seen three people now walking towards the door. One of them looked a bit unsteady, so this might be the people we'll see. Yeah, control, Peter Six. Yeah, we're at location. Hi. Can I have a with you? Yeah, English? Drink-related incidents are Gibraltar's most common public order offence, and alcohol-related jobs rise over the weekend. He said that he has been drinking all the time, that he has been asked to go y que no tiene dinero para pagar. Y también dice que le debe una botella del bar. No, no, yo le debo tres copas de vino. Una botella, tiene cojones que venga a hacerlo. No, 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 oye. Oye, tomame una botella de vino. Sal para afuera. Sal para afuera. Amigo, no dice una botella de vino. Sal para afuera. Tomá tres vino con María que me ha dado la barra. Sal para afuera. Don't shout in the hotel, please. It's going to make the... Pero me da coraje que le diga una botella de vino. Pero no tiene que poner... En frente de la policía... Estamos hablando contigo bien. Obviously, I'm my size. I mean, you see other officers, and and you can't compare. I, I'm a small lady, and it, it does play a difference when you're out there. And obviously, you've just got to get on with it. And for me, I mean, I don't shy away from dealing with someone who's much taller than me or bigger than me. And I'm very stubborn as it is. You can't be in the police if you're scared of people. You just got to deal with it. Es mejor cosa. We'll take you in the car, claro, claro, vamos a la casa y tranquilo. Si quieres, sí, pero... The tipsy troublemaker is getting a lift in the police van, but at least it isn't to the station. Venga, que estamos busy. Venga. Control, Peter Six. He's been escorted away from the area and nothing further to report. What a guy. We don't usually give people lifts, but... It was the quickest way to resolve the situation. Because he was intoxicated, we'd rather remove him from the location, get him out of the way, and that way we know he won't be causing any problems. So it just solves it, really. So at the end of the day, it's a drunk old man. Yeah. It's a drunk old man. You could see he wasn't exactly going to cause much of an issue. Are we going to put him through the indignity of throwing him in a cage? It's not worth it. By the border, PC Matt Myhill and Sergeant Stuart Stone are out on shift. They too are on the lookout for any antisocial behaviour. I love being on the streets. I do enjoy going out with my junior officers and walking the beat with them and showing them what policing is about and keep eyes and ears open. Stuart knows the weekend is guaranteed to bring challenges for the police, with people overindulging on drink and drugs. There is a lot of consumption of cannabis, and we also found that on weekends, like especially Friday nights, when most people are out, there's also a lot of consumption of cocaine. You think it's going to be a quiet night, and all of a sudden you can just explode. Chat with this one. 
Tonight, Stuart and Matt are checking out known antisocial behaviour hotspots. All the other cars are drive off now. <laughs> the passenger in one car acts nervously when they spot the patrol vehicle. Yo, right, lads, what are you up to tonight? All good? Just gonna do a few checks, all right? Any ID on you? You lads got your IDs and you got the insurance. Thanks, mate. Oh, you want my license? Yeah, can do. Yeah. You got anything on you you shouldn't have? No. You sure? Yeah. You want to search you in, in the car? As Matt searches the driver, Stuart deals with the passenger. You've obviously been smoking, I see by your eyes. You keep your hands where they are, okay? I told you to keep your hands. Give it to you. Give it to you. Matt, come on this side. Yeah, stay in the car. This is DR him. He had a reefer on top. Yeah, step out for me, please. Just put your hands on onto the car. Cheers. Any sharps or blades no. that I might injure myself? The passenger has tried to hide a joint. But are they hiding anything else? I'm just going to go down your legs to your ankles, OK? <laughs> what you got? It was just that one that I, I wanted to do. OK. Now, let me just check your waistline. Eagle-eyed Stuart has spotted more than just a joint. This is the cannabis. Is this your cannabis from the centre console? Hey, eh? come here. Gibraltar cops Stuart and Matt are out on a night shift, looking to crack down on antisocial behaviour. They've stopped two men who were trying to conceal a joint. Told you to keep your hands, give it to you. Give it to you. But that's not all they've tried to hide. It's not your cannabis. In the centre console. Honestly, officer, I'm telling you honestly, that's my mom. Is this your cannabis in the centre console? Hey? Yeah. Eh? Come here. No. So it's not yours and not yours. Matt, mm -hmm. arrest them both for possession. The under arrest for possession of uh, controlled Class yeah, B control. drug. You're not obliged to say anything unless you wish to do so. We do say you may yeah. be put into writing and given an evidence. Do you understand? Yeah. In Gibraltar, cannabis is a Class B drug. To be found in possession can lead to a fine of up to £10,000 or up to 12 months in prison, although fines are normally a lot lower. That's the reef car he tried to hide. His eyes were really glazed and teary, which is one of the tell signs when they're normally smoking cannabis. They both say it doesn't belong to them, therefore they both get arrested for the possession of the cannabis and then it'll be for them to prove in court that it didn't belong to them. But something more serious in the car has caught Stuart's attention. Have you got a baton, Torch? You can't have a baton. Uh, I was told by my father he can actually keep it in the boot, but it's not really in the boot. Matt, arrest him further for possession of offensive weapon. What's that? It's a baton, Torch, found in the front pocket of the front door. OK, and this yours, yeah? OK, so you're also arrested for possession of an offensive weapon. I'll remind you you're still under caution. You're not obliged to say anything. It looks like a perfectly innocent torch, but on closer inspection, it's actually a disguised weapon. This is a baton. It's like spiked on the top. It's also a torch. This is sold on internet and quite easily do a lot of harm if used upon another person. 
It is an offensive weapon. Yeah, that's it. And therefore, he's been arrested for it. Going to grab your wallet or anything like that. You will be going up to the station now. You might want to lock up your car then. With neither confessing to owning the cannabis and the driver admitting to buying the offensive weapon, both men are having their weekends cut short as they are off to custody. Back at the station, Stuart takes a closer look at the torch that's concealing the dangerous weapon. It actually extends, makes it longer. It's quite lethal. It's only for one purpose, and easily crack somebody's head open. In 2020, nearly 280 million tonnes of goods pass through Gibraltar waters. With so many boats travelling in... I don't think it's this one, though. ..the authorities have to operate with strict regulations. It's been in fish, no? You can smell it. Today, customs officer Trevor Martinez and his colleague Stefan are inspecting some of the boats at the docks. So it must be this one. Hi, customs to come on board. The ship which carries supplies and transports crew members to oil rigs has come from Dubai, stopping in Gibraltar to refuel. How long do you intend to stay in Gibraltar? Two, three hours, four hours? About two hours. Two hours, huh? Yes. Trevor's mission is to ensure there is no illicit cargo on board and that the correct paperwork is completed. Any firearms on board? Yeah. Yes? Uh, what's your name? Firearms, rifles, weapons of mass destruction, grenades, none, no? Yeah. But he is finding it difficult to get a straight answer to a straight question. Narcotics or, or medicines? Narcotics, none, no? Uh, me medicines? Ship medicine. No, no, medicine. No, Who speaks better? Because I yes, think yes. there might be a bit of a language barrier. Yes, yes. Yeah, I get your point, but no problem. I am a little bit, you know, uh, no problem. Go ahead. No, okay. Yes, I go ahead. I don't know whether it's that you're not understanding me or whether um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, the questions are putting you uncomfortable. You, no, no, you understand no, no. what I mean? Yes, I do. With communication clearly an issue with the crew, can I have a look around? Okay. Yeah. Of course. No, no. Show, show, show me around. I'm just curious uh, to see the layouts. Yeah. Trevor needs to inspect the ship himself. Yeah. Is this where you keep all the medicines? And soon finds the medical supply storeroom completely unsecured. Should be in the lock and key. Oh no, no. This no. is uh, only for. Uh, we need everything uh, but myself. OK, but it still should be under, under lock and key as per maritime reg regulations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got somewhere you can put it. Yeah. The supply cupboard is full of medicines, which isn't unusual for ships out at sea for long periods. But there is no lock on the door, meaning that anyone can help themselves to prescription drugs. They don't seem to be able to answer any questions in a concrete manner. And we found the, the, the hospital uh, the medical bay, and it's wide open. The the drugs are not under lock and key, which is obviously should be under maritime regulations. Maritime regulations are laws for seaborne trade, and Trevor is a stickler to ensure they are followed. Up on the top deck, they make an even more shocking discovery. Why is this here and not downstairs? This is all new, coming from Dubai. And I make a list, but I must transit one by one. This medicine for what? This medicine for what? Uh, like that. So this is my job. More medication has been found completely unsecured. Trevor is growing concerned with the crew's apparently chaotic storage. You got it in Dubai. How many days ago was this? It's a long time. It's a long time. Maybe two weeks. A long time. And KG explanations. We come back to the same thing. It needs to be under lock and key. I know you're sorting it, but uh, you've told me you, you left Dubai 20 days ago. Yeah. You had enough time to, to, yeah, yeah, to sort it. it. 
But Trevor's colleague Stefan may have found a solution. Uh, they can't find the key. There's a room beside. That so they can lock. Can't be we'll, we'll, the key. Yeah, there's a key. We'll do that uh, here, yeah. It's, it's the only workaround. With all the medication now locked securely in the cabin, and the captain in charge of the key. Okay. okay. Thank you, Captain. Thank you. And with all the paperwork and cargo accounted for, Trevor is satisfied the ship can be on its way. How they've operated today, I would say that they've been a bit uh, lackadaisical. They, it seemed like they didn't have a clue. It's just been a case of a slap on the wrist, a verbal uh, warning. But if they commit the, the same act, I would probably be more inclined for maybe a fixed fine. It's early afternoon. So we've got a report that there's a fight going on in a house. I mean, we've got very brief information right now, but it seems like there's been a fight between some family members. Response officers Terry McCormack and Jaron Walker are racing to reports of a domestic assault. They've been jumping in and out of the window to hit each other or something along those lines. Um, so obviously we're trying to get there now and we'll, we'll get more information once we get there. In Gibraltar, domestics are one of the most frequently reported incidents. Yeah, it's that one. With over 500 recorded in 2019 to 2020. We're in trouble from Pier 6. We're arriving on scene. What's going on? Why has everyone else started calling us? The resident is refusing to give any details and claims it was just a family argument. Who wants us inside? With no one in the household wanting to make a complaint and the man involved no longer on the scene, Jaron and Terry have little choice but to leave. But the missing suspect has been spotted. Yeah, control. We're in the area of Morrison's. Do we know exactly where he is? And he isn't keen to hang around. I got him, I got him. Control from Peter Six. He's just seen us and done our runner. Hold on. Gibraltar's town centre, PC's Terry McCormack and Jaron Walker are hunting a man wanted for an alleged assault. That way, that way. I got him, I got him. Hold on. Having spotted the police van, the suspect has fled, with Jaron in pursuit on foot. Control from Peter Six, he's just seen us and done our runner. Um, 232 is now pursuing on through Morrison's. With Jaron chasing the suspect alone, Terry needs to find his colleague to back him up. 232, what's your location? Oh, he's got him, he's got him. Round the corner, Jaron and another officer have the man in cuffs. You cannot deal with this in the street. But he is claiming it was just a family <laughs> argument. <laughs> Hmm. I was in my granny's house. Let's check his hey, everything check. No, I don't. I was having an argument with my granny and the security got killed. Listen to the officer. Can't I have an argument with granny? Okay, uh, what's he uh, preaching the piece? No, I was inside the house, eh? Can't I have an argument out, with it's granny? It's to the outside as well. No, it wasn't in, outside, eh? It was inside, eh? Sort yourself at the we'll sort this out at the station. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Right down here. I love this, man. Okay. You think I love this? Yes, hey, I mind your head. You think I love this? I want to have an argument with my granny, I have it. Okay. After his chase, Modest Jaron has barely broken a sweat. Nah, that wasn't that far, honestly. A uh, hundred meters dash. The man will be dropped off at custody to be interviewed about the alleged assault. And as Jaron and Terry continue their shift, it's not long before their next job comes through. And again, it's alcohol related. There's a female that's obviously under the influence. Well, the report that she's attended one of the 
local takeaways, um, ordered food, now refusing to pay for it, and we'll check it out and see what's going on. She's pretty well known. The world is quite a small place, so uh, you tend to see the same faces pop up again, just because there aren't that many people yeah, she's around. Yeah, she's here. Help us out. Susie, come across here. We're in the bus stop. Control, control, we have a stop. It takes patience and experience to get to the bottom of some incidents, especially when the suspect is intoxicated. Stop, stop. Sit, stay with us. Stay there for a second. Where have I you been, just came from? I've been in town. Where about in town? Everywhere. What do you have in the bag? I went to the Indian. OK. Have you paid for the food from the Indian? Yes. Did you get this from the Indian? Yes. Why did you leave over there? 281 from Pier 6. <laughs> have you spoken to the owners of the restaurant to clarify whether she has paid for the food? I paid them. We just had a chat with the lady from the takeaway. She said that she needs to contact the boss to see what actions they want to take. If the owner presses charges, the woman, who is a known offender, could face time in jail. Just come, come, come up here with us just now. Come and take a seat in the back of the van. Just sit in the back of the van here for us. No, no, you're not going anywhere just now. I just want you off the street. Just jump up there for me. The suspected curry thief, realising she could now be in trouble, has suddenly changed her story. So you've got money there to pay for what you've taken, eh? Yeah, 281 from Peter Six. Ten. Yeah, she's aware that she's taking something without paying for it. However, she does have the funds here to pay for it. Yeah, Peter Six from Sierraska. If that is the case, let's uh, pay for it. And it's something less that we have. We're extremely busy down at Cassidy. Yeah, 10-4, ten 10-4. Four, ten four. Let's see, um, most appropriate action, I believe. Right, let's go ten four, and you can you pay time. the guys at the curry house. Yeah. All right. For next time, pay. Next time, don't just go. Down at the station, the team are receiving their final briefing from Stuart before heading out on another weekend night shift. OK, now it's Friday night. There's loads of people out. There's loads of kids around. So please remember, underage drinking, underage smoking. We remove the alcohol, we remove the cigarettes, take the details and call the parents. This evening, Kiana is crewed with PC Matt Hayward. Gibraltar isn't long out of a COVID lockdown and travel restrictions have been eased, meaning locals and tourists alike are out celebrating the weekend. It has been quite busy tonight and um, there's been a lot of underage drinkers and the ambulance have had to pick up a few um, underage drinkers who have been quite heavily under the influence of alcohol. So we just need to keep an eye out for that. So basically it's just a, a bad cocktail at the moment for Friday nights because you've got the summer season just kicking in and um, Covid restrictions have all been lifted so put those two things together and it's just, you know, very busy. And it isn't long into the shift when the crew get a 10-6 call over the radio. So basically 10-6 is that there's a fight in progress so we need to make our way that way. It's a grade one, which means get there as soon as you can. We don't know much more, but yeah, basically get there as soon as possible and deal with it. They don't know how many people are involved in the incident and are getting more information by radio. This gentleman is acting in a disorderly manner and he seems to be intoxicated, so we're gonna attend and see what's going on. If I'm not mistaken, it's the one at the bottom of the hill. Yeah, we're just on Rosa Road entering Vineyard now. The thing is, we're not exactly sure what we're heading to, but it has been called in over the radio that there are some underage drinkers around. Around the corner, a drunk man has been detained by officers. It seems the only fight in progress was between him and the door. Yes, sir. Can I report criminal damage? 
Since when? So you're under arrest. Do you not oblige to say anything unless you wish to do so? What, what have do you I say? done wrong? Then you put into writing and given an evidence. Fair enough. Okay. But what have I done wrong, sir? I had a report of criminal evidence. What have I done wrong? Okay. But what have I done wrong? It's been reported. Yeah, okay, but this way, this way, this way. No, no, no. No, no, yeah, because, no, no, it's sir, bro, I can't. <laughs> no, no. You read, yeah, sir. The suspect is protesting his innocence, but there is a broken plant plot on the floor and a damaged door. How do you get those cuts on your faces, sir? I didn't do nothing wrong. Hmm? Sir, I did nothing wrong. And I'm not blaming no one, and I <laughs> my mouth shut. But I didn't know nothing wrong, yeah, OK? We get called to all sorts of jobs within the force. When you're dealing with people outside, um, communication is key. I mean, knowing how to talk to people will help you de-escalate the matter. And obviously, like, my main priority here is to help people, and especially vulnerable people. Will you take him up? Yeah. I've got, got my jewel on his bag. Yeah. No, I've got your bag, mate. Let's go and go up the stairs. It's going to be all right, mate. It's going to be OK. Take a seat here. We're going to leave the door open with you for a minute. Mind your head as you get in. The suspect is clearly the worst for wear, so officers are bringing him in to sober up. He'll be interviewed in the morning. I don't have a problem. So why can't you just leave the door and sleep in the street? Why? I talk about it at the station, okay? Yeah, have a good. I don't think we're going to get to the station. Why'd you say that? Because you're going to kill him in the way. You're going to put him to me. You know who you are. You know who you are. You know who you are. Is it okay? Two minutes, okay? And you're out of there. It's not accepted, so my friend. Thank you so much, dude. I'll get it. I'll get it. Yeah? She's so much better than me. So much better than me. Is it Criminal damage. Criminal damage. Criminal damage. The police have a zero tolerance approach to drunk people and those who cause criminal damage. Have you got proof that I've done something illegal? We're conducting an investigation. I'm not going to argue with you. You've been arrested on suspicion, all right? And this man appears to be ticking both boxes. There's more to it, but what we know now, we were sent to um, this address. Basically, he had been drinking all day with his friends. Um, obviously, he was heavily under the influence, as you can see. So they decided to kick him out. He didn't want to leave, so he's gone back and he's kicked the door. And, yeah, he's broken the door on a plant pot, so obviously he's been arrested. But for the Royal Gibraltar Police... Fizzy Friday. ..it's another drunk reveller taken off the streets. In this episode... OK, confirmative, he's got the drugs. ..the cocaine dealer who was arrested on his way to work... ..got a uh, pouch full of coke pleaded guilty to importing, possession and intent to supply a Class A drug. He was sentenced to two years and seven months. I got him, I got him. Hold on. The man arrested for making a disturbance in a supermarket car park... Yes, I want to have an argument with my ..pleaded not guilty in court. The case was adjourned and a new date is still to be set. You've obviously been smoking, you see by your eyes. The two men were cautioned for cannabis found in their car. No further action was taken against the driver for the offensive weapon.